Welcome to Tilt Shift. I'm Tim. I'm Brian. And today we're going to do one that's been requested quite a bit it has. Uh, from yep. people who watched season one. They said, you know, you should do Harry Potter. And we thought, how are we going to do eight films? Eight movies. Right. That's in one show. Well, there's no time. way to do it. We can't. Yeah. And But again, this is not a typical movie review, so we're not right. going through and telling you the storyline of every goodness. single movie. <laughs> yeah. But what we could do is analyze those themes and some of the ideas and yeah teachings that you see in these films. And the influence and, of those films on the culture, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to do. In fact, this is going to take two episodes because there is just so much in the eight films. Uh, like with many other films, some good, some bad. And right. we're going to be pointing out those different philosophies as we go along. Now, these movies, because there's eight of them, they have different ratings. Uh, there are four of them that are rated PG. And those are for scary moments, mild language, fantasy and creature violence, mild sensuality. Mm -hmm. And then four of them are rated PG-13 for sequences of fantasy and intense action violence, brief sensuality, and frightening images. Like, and honestly, all of them could probably be PG-13 to one level or another, right? Yeah, that's one of the things that we're going to cover a little bit is that they, they start off cute and they there are dark elements in these yeah. films. And so uh, don't think that they're just little kids shows. And, yeah. But we'll get to that. Um, why are these still relevant? Well, for a lot of different reasons. First of all, people are still talking about it, right? And you think about the fact that J.K. Rowling, uh, I mean, she's been battling the can cancel culture. And so, so she's, she's been the in the public eye. If you don't know she's, that, the, she's author the author of the book. Which so. I've not read the books, so full disclosure, but you have. <laughs> you got to learn how to read, buddy. It's as simple as that. I have, yeah. Right, and I've watched the movies uh, for multiple reasons. But so she's battling cancel culture. So she is in the press. We see her publicly. She's a public figure. And then it's still going on. There are still uh, related movies to the Harry Potter franchise. The Fantastic Beast right. movie. The third one just came out this in past 2022, year. 2022, right? Yeah. Yep. And so you got that going on. You had the special reunion tour back in 2022, right? Uh, and so, and there was a tournament of houses. Yeah, it was like a game show they had okay. with the, the people who were Harry Potter experts. Is that like I mean, Gryffindor versus Yeah, they had each Slytherin of the houses. And yep. stuff like that. Yep. Okay, so they're going on. And I those are people that. who had like watched the movie hundreds of times right. and recognized any little, yeah, it was crazy. Okay. Uh, Universal Studios, if you've been there or Islands I have, Adventure. Yes. They've got mm -hmm. Harry Potter. They've got Diagon Alley in one area, yep. and they've got the uh, the castle, Hogwarts. You can actually get like the the beverages from the movie actually yep. there, and different things. It's well themed. Yeah. Then uh, even in last year, Life Magazine, March 2022, Harry Potter: The Story That Changed the World. I mean, this is something that's still in the culture, even though it's been going on for over 20 years. Uh, best selling book series in history. Eight, the seven books, eight movies, over 500 million copies. 500, half a, a little billion. bit more than the Truth Chronicles, a little yeah, more than your quick book. Answers. Quick answers. Yeah, to social it has been, <laughs> not much, you know. Yeah, pretty close. Oh, yeah, I know, right? And then the, uh, it box office totals nearly $10 billion. With that's, a B. That's with a B, $10 billion. <laughs> so it has a, and all those numbers just really show that this has had a huge influence on a lot of different people. And even if you're watching a movie for entertainment, ideas are going to be pushed upon you either blatantly or subtly as you do. Like it or not, it's part of our culture. Yeah. And there are certain phrases, certain things people will use that come from well, the series. Mm -hmm. And similar to how Star Wars has impacted the culture or some other shows as well. Um, so if you're not familiar with what Harry Potter is, I'll quickly summarize it. Um, he's the boy who lived. So anyways, on his 11th birthday, he's, he's an orphan mm -hmm. um, living with his aunt and uncle. On his 11th birthday, he finds out that he's a wizard and he got, he's going to get to go to Hogwarts, which is a school for witchcraft and mm -hmm. wizardry. And the seven books, eight movies cover um, one book per year, the mm -hmm. seven years that he's going to be in school. And it starts off pretty young, and then he's yeah. a teenager by the end. Yep. So, and yeah. that's one of the reasons why it does start off a little cuter and then get yep. darker. The, they, the students get older as you, you follow them through the years. Um, there's an evil wizard, uh, Lord Voldemort, who attempts to kill Harry when he's just a toddler, just a baby. And he, for some reason, he's unsuccessful. The curse backfires. It scars Harry with this lightning scar on his forehead. Mm -hmm. And eventually, Voldemort returns to power and is going to try to finish him off. But Harry has to learn how to defeat Voldemort. That's basically what's happening through the seven books. And yep. uh, there are very strong themes in this of friendship, of courage, of family, of love. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they're so popular, but it's also that classic coming of age morality tale, you know, right. the hero cycle. You have this person who's beaten down and seems like they have no chance. They come from nowhere An and all of a sudden story, if you will. they become the hero. And uh, through 
adversity, trials, tribulations, and Harry goes through a lot of that. Really, as, a, as I was kind of re-watching them again to get ready for the show, it just reminded me, Harry Potter, in a sense, and along with what you're saying, he reminds me of Rocky. Yeah. In a sense, because if you watch the Rocky movies, it wasn't like Rocky could knock people out with one shot. No, he was getting knocked down again and again. He could what, take a punch. He could. And what was so compelling about him is he got back up. Yeah, he like, never he kept getting up. back up. He kept getting back up, and then eventually he won, of course. And so Harry Potter, to me, is much like that in more of an emotional, psychological sense throughout the series, and physically sometimes, but he gets knocked down. He gets knocked down. So who would win between Rocky yeah. and Harry Potter if Harry had a wand? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you know, if you could keep your distance, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but one of the reasons they're so popular, they're well-written characters. I mean, oh. I think people can find somebody in the series or lots of people in the series to relate to. Both well, characters, the good characters and the bad yeah. characters. You're like, I know someone who's just like that, and they're so annoying. Yeah, they're, they're so frustrating. Hey, why? Uh, I don't know. Why are you so freakishly annoying? Or, or like, I really I like this. Yeah, you see that. Yeah. So it's easy to relate to. It's a fun fantasy world that, uh, you know, that interacts with the real world. And so for the people who are longing for something more, this kind of offers that outlet, you know, that, hey, what if it was like this? And well, and I think, too, I mean, in, in a subtle way, we know biblically God has placed eternity in our hearts. Yeah. And so we know there's something beyond this world. We know there's something beyond this. And so, again, I think that's one of the reasons the movie resonates with people is because it's given an outlet to that expression. Now, of course, it's not truth, but we're just saying it connects to the reality that there is something in truth beyond this world. Right. Now, over the course of the, the books, and this is more of a movie review, I'll refer to the books just a couple of times, yeah. but mostly we're going to be talking about the movies. But over the course of those movies, it explores a broad range of human emotions from grief uh, and loss. I mean, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, when she was writing this, she had lost her mom during the writing of the first one, so that oh, wow. really impacted okay. her, mm -hmm. uh, of laughter, fun, love, loneliness, uh, rejection, acceptance, uh, even teenage angst. You get to yeah. see that. And, uh, and it's joy, well portrayed. I mean, embarrassment, yeah, fear, all those things that people have experienced growing up mm -hmm. and sometimes kids are wrestling with at the time, they're seeing Harry or his friends or other people go through those things. And, and it makes it very powerful. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to see in the first couple of clips here, we're going to see that this is really an underdog story. It's one of the reasons why people root for Harry from the very beginning. So you like an underdog. Everyone likes an underdog. I don't. Because he is somebody who is, for lack of a better term, he's oppressed. He is in an awful situation. You can't use that word. <laughs> <laughs> he's, here, think about it. He's not quite 11 years old. He's lost his parents, but he doesn't even yeah. know them because it was when he was around one year old. And he's grown up with his aunt and uncle who treat him this way. Up. Get up. Now! Wake up, Carlton! We're going to the zoo! Is it wrong? I want him to fall down the steps. <laughs> no. <laughs> Happy birthday, son. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just cook the breakfast and try not to burn anything? Yes, Aunt Petunia. I want it. So you can see how they speak to Harry. Yeah. They just talk down to him. They boss him around all the time. I mean, they are the authority. They have the right to, you know, have him do chores and everything. But right. he's wearing these big baggy clothes because they're hand-me-downs of Dudley's, his, his cousin that you see who picks on him. Yeah. And they have him locked in his room and his cupboard under the stairs. They locked him in. Like, he couldn't get out. Right. They unlock him from the outside in. And if you watch the movies, that's not a one-off. I mean, they are horrible to Harry. It's one thing about the movie as well, movies overall, many of the characters, I mean, you can clearly kind of tell... So that's a couple who are kind of reveals later on, but these people are not good. These are bad, or, or at least a bad influence or bad characters. And other times, these people are clearly good in and, what they're doing. And at some point, because they do get to explore that over eight films, we do yeah. understand why his aunt right. treats him. Doesn't justify it, it, it but doesn't, there's no, a it history doesn't. to it that right. kind of gives her more. Um, and so the, those are the Dursleys, his, his cousins, mm -hmm. and uh, they are instantly unlikable. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you don't like it when somebody treats a kid like that. Oh, so bad. And so that's what they're doing. And we're going to see that he they they do more bullying. This one's more of like an emotional ab abuse or neglect in this yep. scene. And you? I'll be in my bedroom, making no noise and pretending that I don't exist. Too right you will. With any luck this could well be the day I make the biggest deal of my career, and you will not mess it up. 
So there's like a party about to take place, and he's made it go in his room. Well, and this is the second story. year. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I think part of what appealed to me about the character in the movies of Harry is that the way he responds initially to all, all of that bullying, he's still very humble, gentle. I mean, I'm sure he's angry about it. And his anger shows up later on mm-hmm. in different ways. But earlier on, he's very humble in his response even the bullying like that. In, in the ones that we just saw there, so in this one, they, they actually put bars on his windows. They don't allow him. Uh, he, Dudley, his, his cousin, beats him up routinely. They talk about um, his other aunt mocks his parents who were murdered and just right to his face and says all sorts of nasty things to him. Now, there he does lose his temper. And, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, he, this kid is suffering a lot of, of trauma as a young kid. And so you just want to root for him. Yep. So we see even at school, this is during his fourth year, where he is somebody has put his name into what's called the Goblet of Fire, which is going to enter him into this life-threatening Special tournament. tournament. That he does, he's not old enough to be in. He doesn't want to. He didn't. That's right. That wasn't his plan. But because he's the youngest person, people kind of turn against him. Like, oh, you're always seeking Like he fame. broke the rules. Right. He loses his best friend over it, and this is how the other kids at school treat him. Treat Potter. Oh, you stink, Potter. <laughs> Potter. Potter stinks. Cedric Wolf. Love Cedric. Thanks. Like your badge. <laughs> Excuse me. Two out of seven, this is rubbish. Oh, 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 what's that? Hey, hey, read the badge, Potter. Can I have a word? <laughs> oh. All right. You stink, Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Dragons. That's the first task. They've got one for each of us. Come on, Sed! Are you serious? Uh. So even though everybody at his school is bullying, he still wants to do what's fair. He yeah. wants. He- well, actually, even in that clip, so that's a guy he's kind of in competition in mm-hmm. from his own group in the school, right? Yep. He's not supposed to be in. That guy is. And so they're tra- basically in the movie, they're saying that guy's great and Harry Potter is a cheater and he stinks, right? Mm-hmm. But he still wants to help him by letting him know this is the first challenge so the guy's not caught, caught unaware and can defend himself. And so he still shows care and empathy even though he's being bullied. Right. And this is, like I said, this is one of the reasons people root for him. And this is what makes him, it makes him relatable. It it shows that he is not a Mary Sue. And yeah. if people aren't familiar with that term, mm-hmm. that's uh, what we're seeing a lot in modern films. It's where the, the young woman who has to be, oftentimes she's beautiful. Everybody likes her instantly. She has no flaws. She can mm-hmm. beat up any man. She's smarter than any man. She's just... Uh, Charlie Angels, right? Yeah, From the last we season. We covered that, yeah, with the woke <laughs> women episode where that's how uh, in yeah. some of these newer woke films, women are portrayed that way. Right. And they're... They're not relatable because nobody's like that, uh, except for my wife, who is smarter than <laughs> You are quite perfect, Miss Fairfax. Oh, I hope I am not that. It would leave no room for development. But uh, well, well done. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>